my name is Chris Claremont. You're watching Omni X-Men. I'll take it from there, Chris. You're all good. Welcome back to Omni X-Men. It's been a hot minute. Took a few weeks off. We are back. We are reading through our X-Men Omnibus Volume 4. And I mean we, I mean me and this guy, yo, Justin from No Good Comics. How you doing, man? Good, dude. I, uh, I actually found my copy. It's Ooh. a nice little newsy. There, there it is. There. there it is. And uh, yeah, man. Excited We're diving to... into that issue tonight. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. It's been it's been a minute. It's been a minute. It's been, <laughs> it's been a minute. <laughs> we're in the, we're in uh, the portion of the year when there are gaps that have to happen. Scheduling reoccurs, and we are all taking another gap next week, and we'll get to that in a bit. But then we should be on a nice steady run through to the end of the year and finish out strong. So yep, looking yep, forward yep. to that. Definitely. Uh, for, for those that don't know, this is the weekly in quotes show uh where justin and i get together sometimes on his channel sometimes on mine and we're going through each omnibus from the chris claremont era of uncanny x-men we're on volume four like i said we're reading issue 189 tonight we're joined by great community members every single week and all the links are down below you want to make sure you're subscribed up make sure you're following justin make sure you're following me so you're jumping back and forth hit the notification bell we go live almost every single tuesday breaking this stuff down and tonight we've got a very special friend uh this guy I, i'm so disappointed that we didn't hang when he was down in san diego i say this every time he hangs out with me i gotta get up uh northern california get into the oregon area get, meet up with this guy because this is joel the geek my guy oh oh, oh. <laughs> all right <laughs> you're really enjoying that book joel's like we're not live yet right <laughs> uh, I, really, I really love my my oh, one and only slabbed comic book. Yeah. <laughs> Joel, my man, you are a cosplayer. You are a, a YouTuber. You get you go to cons. You're doing like interviews. You're shooting videos. You are always a bastion of fun around this industry of comics. So it's yeah. so great to hang out with you, man. Awesome. Yeah, man. Glad I could be here. So uh, we're gonna say hello to the chat. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive into them. Then we're gonna come back and we're gonna give you some rapid fire questions because we want to learn a little bit about Joel tonight and his X Men. Rapid fire. We yeah. Ra in quotes. <laughs> what is up, Magic Lasso? He says, Justin, give me that GSX one. He says hello to Rachel Dinners. Very important tonight. It's on the way. Should be it, in the mail. It's shipped. Okay, know. good. Yeah. Diana Ross. Why can't she be a guest? She keeps uh, ghosting me. Not happening. I don't know. <laughs> Candace in the chat. What is going on, Candace? Happy Tuesday. We are back. It's good to see you. Ryan says, if Jackson Roy Kirk comes into here tonight, she'll have meow at him. Uh, I mean, that's always acceptable. Always. Yeah. Scotty Vaughn in the chat. What's up, Scotty? Hey, Scotty. Got another great John from California. What's up, John from Cali Comics? How you doing, sir? Cali. Um, so yeah, tonight is issue 189. And as a reminder, we do trivia at the end of each show. You guys got to really think back to the Wolverine and Kitty Pride uh, six issue miniseries. The final two issues that were on Justin's channel last issues five and six. We'll be asking trivia about those books tonight. And uh, funny answers get points. Correct answers get points. You can get on the wheel to win some great prizes. Our featured artist this season is Tony Silas and his link is down below. We have purchased a commission from him. And somebody in the chat is going to win that when we do our giveaway in June. So you get to have, you get to pick what you want Tony to draw for you and you can expand on what we've paid for. If you want to add other characters, add backgrounds, add things, you can certainly do that. But shipping is paid for and the commission is paid for. So you right. are in along with other prizes. We've already got other people hitting us up to give away other things. This is always a fun end of year activity when we get around to the middle of June and we just get nuts. Stuff just yeah. flies out of the shelves. We get things. all kinds yeah. of things. We get drinking and things get free. And that's how I think John gave his car away last time. We were, yeah, I we're... did. I'm biking to work these days. Uh, <laughs> it's healthier. Just overly excited. Better for the environment. <laughs> yeah. <you go. laughs> so stick around, answer some trivia questions. But we're going to get to know Joel the Geek right now, Joel. So I got some rapid fire. These are basically yes or no or pick one kind of answers questions in and around x-men so let's oh, let's no. hear a little bit about from you um if you had a choice would you prefer to live in the baxter building or the x mansion neither <laughs> oh. scandalous those are like two like, like <laughs> magnets for chaos and destruction I mean, 
<laughs> and like, the so but like, there's softball games rally. and pool parties, <laughs> and there's robots that answer you, and there's holodeck kind of like danger room yeah, play but areas. The last building like disappears into other dimensions, and then like yeah. that mansion, like right now, it's destroyed. Hey, like, like it's a bad like, the thing, Joel. Time is <laughs> they seem to rebuild it fast. I'm just they gonna do. say. However, I mean, the byline for like joining the X-Men and going to school is, I hope you exo- survive the experience. I do not want to hear those words. Right. Me when I walk into a building. It's true. <laughs> With the Baxter building, they have me like, they'd probably have me sign like some acknowledgement that I won't like, uh, like do anything libel against them. <laughs> sign your life away. <laughs> yeah. I love it. All right. Does Gambit have a lower back tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody has said no I mean, to this so far. <laughs> Whether it's the animated version or the comic book version, there's some there's somewhere in the multiverse he has he has tattoos on his back. Absolutely. I think it, I would argue that it's probably cat. almost every. It's gonna be the names of his cats on his back. You think so? Okay. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Um okay. Um so, which mutant character should never have a clone? <laughs> That's, a oh, no. That's a trick question. <laughs> <laughs> they all have clones. I mean, most of them do. So, if you could sort of retroactively make this person should never get a clone. Have like, you no not cloning. read Sins of Sinister? Like, <laughs> I was I mean, going to say. <laughs> he's a, he is a problem you, in this universe. Would you, would you like me to show you a brochure on why Sinister has a clone of you? <laughs> what not to do, yeah. It's not what to do. It's you're a clone or you've been cloned. Prepared by Mr. Sinister. What to do when you find out you're a clone. Yes, surprise. Yeah. <laughs> you're a clone. Now what? Yeah. So can you pick one? Would you pick would you pick Sinister? You're saying no more Sinisters? Oh my God. I think we can ever get rid of him. <laughs> Oh goodness! So Joel's not even answering. He's like, "I know I won't answer this question." They all need to. No more clones for anybody. Nobody gets a clone. Everyone's gonna have a clone eventually. It's it's, it's more like the answer is yes. All right. All How about this love? one? Do you consider Emma Frost a villain? No. Ooh, good answer. Mm. I I don't either. I think she's somewhat misunderstood. Uh, there you go. Yeah. All right. Exactly. I love it. Exactly. Um. Let's see. Uh, is Storm the best X Men leader? Yeah, there yeah. it is. Yeah. And then Taskmaster. <laughs> Ooh, bold. All right. All right. Although Forge is getting his new. Apparently, X Force is going to be led by Forge now. This in, in, it in July. It, I mean. I mean, look what he did when he was leader of X Factor. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a good year. It wasn't a good year. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. That was number five. Let's see. Number six. Um, who, uh, which X-Men character would you trust the most to fly the Blackbird jet? I think, uh, that would be Kitty Pride. Good. I mean, she's great with technology, right? Yeah. We know she plays video games. Yeah. <laughs> I think she would be the best and safest one. She'd be the only one to actually land the plane, not crash it. Like, I think she's the only one that ever learned how to land the plane. I think everyone else, they never made it that far in their training, but she was the only <laughs> one because she was alone all forever in the mansion. Like a Man. whole like decade. Right. It was like, I'm I'm alone in the mansion. So I gotta learn something. So I think she's the <laughs> only one that's learned to land the plane. Yes. I mean the others just learned to crash it, I guess. <laughs> Who is the most underappreciated X character? underappreciated oh my gosh um there's so many uh, <laughs> yes my first response would be dazzler but lately she's not been underrated she's gotten a lot of like she's getting a lot of love right yeah i think i think the person that's been the most underrated is the person that is in actually both of these characters both magma and i would say these two right here Rachel. wow then I guess you picked the right issue for tonight. Yes, yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was so. I got I got three more here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, are Gene and Scott the best X cover? All right, sorry, couple. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 
they're out. You're out. Get that redhead out of here. Mm-hmm. Well, no, not get the redhead out of there. No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, if you were talking about the best grapple in X Men, that would be Gene, Cyclops, and Wolverine. There you go. There That's you the go. We're not talking about the best couple. It's a whole different story. <laughs> my own YouTube video just on that. So I'm going to pay the answer right here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, who is more dangerous, Terminators or Sentinels? Both. <laughs> no, come on, Joel. Yes, both. Commit. I'm committing to both because <laughs> one could be overlaid and like subdue and make the other part of him. I mean, He's think so about non-committal. Like, Imrod <laughs> overlays and commits and takes over other robots. I love this. <laughs> which essentially, during the uh, Operation Zero Tolerance, those were Terminators. So, okay, I don't know about this. <laughs> All right, last question, Joel. I usually ask this question uh, uh, the other way around, uh, but I'll do. I'll, would you date a telepath? No. <laughs> oh, no. <God. laughs> Thank you. But at least you know if they stay, they're in. Like they know they know what you're doing. Yeah, I see that point. That's but you, but you got to trust that they're not invading your privacy when you're asking. You know that that comes up tonight. <laughs> it does. Mm. But it does. But it does. Yeah, yeah. Does. Boundaries. Yeah. You need to set boundaries. <laughs> <telepaths>. Expectations <laughs> and boundaries. <laughs> well, there you go, Joel. You survived the rapid fire questions. Uh, let's say hello to anybody who jumped into the chat. Yes. Uh, I know we got our guy, Chet Scotland. What is going on, Chet I Knight? I finally yeah. mailed him his mystery box. It should <laughs> arrive tomorrow, and I hope he enjoys it. Good to see nice. you, sir. Chet, to yes. answer your question, it's this right here. It's Excalibur number Ooh. one. The right. Kitty Pride Nightcrawler era. This this background back is my favorite you. by um Yes. Of her. Who's the who's the cover artist on this one? Sorry. I believe it is Alan Davis who did the cover. Mm. Let me double check. I'll put my glasses. It should be on. It should, I was say, you gotta, you gotta get your spec, re, your specs on, your readers. <laughs> oh, it's uh, Alan Davis and Paul Neary. Nice, Neary. Okay. All right. Well, let's dive into this book tonight. Uh, here we go. The slideshow is up for issue one eighty nine, and uh, we we. I'm gonna I'm gonna break tradition. I'm gonna I'm gonna break tradition tonight. Uh, I I'm gonna go for it. Oh, I'm oh. going to be crapping on this book a bunch tonight. <laughs> I, 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 I am not happy with this comic. I'm not happy. John's not happy. Uh, I told Justin, I, I, I you know, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm guns blazing tonight. Uh, <laughs> not a happy cover. Not a happy book. Not a happy John. Uh, hmm. This might be my least favorite issue we've read. Period. Up to now. Uh... I, I'm, I might, I'm, I'm right there. I'm on the cusp. I'm not thinking back. Probably. I'm not thinking clearly. I don't remember all the Marvel premieres and spotlights and whatever that we've read. Justin, what are your thoughts on this cover? Sorry. I, I just had to jump in there. Dude. <laughs> I no lie. I said something very similar to lady. No good before we jumped on tonight. <laughs> she asked me, what were my thoughts on this book? And uh, it is, I said, it's, it's probably one of the least uh, favorite book of all the ones that we've broken down, at least over these the past uh, <laughs> season or so. Um, uh, so and a lot of chat. Yeah. A lot of it's are, a lot of it's <laughs> are. Um, so, but we'll, we'll get into it. This cover though, man, like, yeah, it's just, it's, it's very noisy. Um, it's so, I don't know. I, and again, I think this is just, it's just Ramita and I'm not, it's just, it's not, the detail that I'm used to and it's just yeah. different. And uh, I don't know the way each, I don't know the style. It's just not for me. Um, lines are too straight. I don't know. It's uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to put it, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> the only thing I'll give it credit to is it is, it is accurate to, to what that, happens in the that's story. That's really what I was saying to myself in the car on the that's way to like, school. It's like, what, what can I say nice about this cover? That's the only, that's, uh, it yeah, really yeah. exemplifies what's going to happen. And it doesn't get, like there's no way of not, like oh look what's gonna happen I know right. what's gonna happen there's no right. like surprise yeah yeah <laughs> look at Chet says oh sorry I skipped him Chet says lazy art plan story let's skip to the next issue <laughs> <laughs> Magic Lasso says I should like this issue since it's a female character heavy story but I even say I was like next <laughs> oh man yeah this is gonna be fun because I will say when you feel strongly about an issue this is a, this is where you get a lot of fun discussion going yeah, that's uh, true. true Joel what? Uh, Outfit wise, uh, 
I feel like John Ramit is like, let me see how naked I can make these ladies in this oh issue. God, <laughs> like, these costumes on the cover. I mean, I'm going to talk about the rest of the costumes inside this. Book. I really hope so. Like, <laughs> it's definitely one of Rachel's, not one of Rachel's best outfits. No. It definitely feels like she is going to like an 80s or late night, early 90s, like <laughs> party scene party in that outfit. Right. But, uh, I literally thought that was a yellow tail the first time I saw this cover. Oh, no. like, I, thought, I thought she was like, I thought she was like, like squirrel. squirrel girl with like the tail coming out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely can see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I agree. the The book is sort of like, why is this here, Chris? Like, that's what I wanted to say. I want to say, Chris, this could have been an annual. Oh uh, yes, an annual. Mm, yes, like, yeah. Shortened yes. and part of another story that's going on, but like. I feel like if it if it was a like if you're reading this as an omni, it's fine because you're immediately gonna see the next chapter. But just reading it as a single, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like okay, I spent. <laughs> I mean, I spent about a dollar on this, but back hopefully it sixty cents. Yeah, yeah, it's sixty cents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What's up, Bobby De La Ghetto? He's like naked. Thumbs up. There you go. I mean, station, <laughs> Bobby. I respect. <laughs> Uh, well, then let's let's get into this story. Uh, we kick it off in New York. Uh, we kick it with Rachel and uh, is it Amara? Is you say it Amara? Is that how Amara. you say it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Amara. Amara with the longest name ever, Juliana Olivia Aguila, but better known as Magma. Those of you that have read or enjoyed New Mutants, you will have seen her for several issues at this point of that series. <laughs> And this ties in a little bit to kind of what's been going on over in that book. We have these characters on, on a boat here uh, in uh, in New York because the team is kind of preparing to say goodbye to Aurora. But while they are there, uh, Rachel's having some flashbacks. She's uh, she's looking out over the city and uh, picturing her version of New York that she comes from in the distant future. And it's firing up a lot of emotions for her. And, 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 although she does say she's looking back and thinking about the rubble of the Twin Towers in my head. I'm like, well, that doesn't hold up anymore. I was like, well, that's kind of crazy that it, that, that <laughs> was in there. Like, uh, I was like, when did this come out again? Like, 1985. Welcome yeah. back. Yeah. So, Justin, what were your thoughts when we get, of course, a really beautiful splash page. But then really like uh, instant trauma flashback for Rachel. Yeah, so I like that it's reversed in this way that the artwork is so lighthearted and beautiful like the skyline as you mentioned and it just a, looks like a beautiful day um but in the in the subtext and and really reading through into the smaller panels it's way darker just in terms of uh, again yeah Rachel's thoughts where she's come from and this is probably the part like this and a few pages ahead are are the parts that I like the most of this book is just getting more detail of Rachel's future of or, or where she's sure. come from you know and and more on this character of what she's gone through and how clearly dark you know that it is and um and really painting that picture m- you know more and more because we've never you know we, we only get little bits and pieces up until now so um i thought that was really powerful i definitely did a double take with um with the towers like yeah that was just like kind of kind of jarring and i I actually would okay, like I, I don't know if it'd be a question for Chris, but just to like bring that up to Chris uh, in some way. I don't even know how I'd formulate that, but just like right. it's just it's just kind of wild to to know that that was like pre-written in, in a sense. Um, and then um, but yeah, so that's kind of where I was at with with this opening scene. If, if, at first glance for anybody who just might be flipping through it, they might just be like, oh, this is just like a really basic scene or whatever. But there's actually a lot more to it, I think, um, you know, for for seeing where Rachel's come from. For sure. And now, Joel, you said you're a, you're a fan of Magma and Rachel. For a lot of X Men readers, this is the first time meeting uh, Amara, and really, Rachel had only been in a couple of issues. Do you remember when you first came across these characters? I first came across Magma in an issue of New Mutants, which was one of the first books I ever got. It was a New Mutants X Men book. That was the first X Men book I ever got. Nice. And then my first my first introduction to Rachel was this this book. Sure. And then I like, oh my gosh, I want to know more about this character. Who is she and stuff? And I, you know, I liked that this this sort of gave you a little more about her background and her trauma. Totally. Yeah, but it was kind of a weird like these two characters out together. Yeah. In general, like it was just yeah. like, 
oh, okay, well, this is Chris being very polarizing, putting <laughs> two characters you would not think would hang out, hanging out. One yeah. who sort of is stuck from a past, a history in the past, right. and another who's from the future, and yet they're on the team together, right? Yeah. Well, they're not even and on the team together, just they, they're going to the school together, and for right. some reason, they just were like, oh, let's go hang out in the city today together. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But very Chris to do that. <laughs> sure. I, I think that's kind of what pulled me out of this too, was like, just, it, it felt random to me. Um, and then on top of that, I'm still very new to magma. So I think that might've been part of it as well. Just my lack of experience with the reader, with that character at this time. But, um, but it was more just the, yeah, I guess the stars of the show of, I, I'm just not, it just seemed very random, especially, I mean, it's, we're, we're coming off of, you know, Kitty and, and Wolverine uh, wildness, you know? So I guess that, that also maybe being set next to that kind of, Kind of sure. That's, that's an interesting thing. Later in one of the issues, it, in, in this issue, it does say that this is sort of like happening like this. There's here's Wolverine yes. and, and Kitty, and this is happening at the same, same time. time. Like yeah. this, yep. essentially. Yep. Which sort yep. of put it in perspective, like, oh yeah, like mm -hmm. you really don't think about that idea of like the timeline of where things are happening at that time. Sure. For publishing, not, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. For, not just for publishing, but also for like the real storyline, like continuity story wise. Because like gotcha. this isn't a crossover event. No. This is an event that's happening, and we just get this little byline that, by the way, this is occurring <laughs> right now. Too. Yeah, go yeah. grab those other issues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, so uh, uh, sorry, Rachel is flashing back to her role during the uh, tragic future that she's coming from. They call her a hound. She's in her gimp costume with her crazy tattoo face and uh, dominatrix spikes all up and down her arms. And this human organization is basically utilizing her as a hunting tool to find and destroy mutants. So she's mm -hmm. sitting there being trained and using her psychic abilities to tell them, look, there's mutants right out there. Then the humans destroy them. And in her mind, she's just feeling all this pain, all this guilt of being basically back in that same part of New York in that water, in those waters. And then we jump over to the team saying goodbye to Storm as she's getting ready to leave and her telling them, like, yeah, I can't wait around for Logan. I know he's and he and Kitty are around, but it's like, I, I'm not going to wait for them. I, I It's hard enough saying goodbye right now. She's also drinking again, uh, <laughs> which, you know, she just tried the bubble, a bit of the bubbly not too long ago. And now she's she's throwing them back <laughs> and getting a little handsy there uh, with all of her friends. And it seems most emotionally saying goodbye to Nightcrawler. Uh, so Joel, what, what are your thoughts here on, uh, dominatrix gimp, Rachel <laughs> and the goodbye of storm? Yeah. It's an interesting, like, I like the thing that I loved about the way the artist did her outfit is just making it all black. <clears throat> so there's this, this dichotomy of her outfit that she's wearing, which is very vibrant and colorful to now she's in this gimp costume yeah, and being used as a, as a, as a sub in this very semi pseudo sexual way but also being used as as a dog to hunt people right mm. and then you have that 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 dichotomy of like you go to this other scene where it's in this boat everyone's dressed it's kind of funny seeing that crawler it's like full <laughs> the on top, like the top hat top, yeah. tails and top like yeah, <laughs> yeah. He he seems the happiest of all of them. He's, he's like so happiest, celebrate. He's, like, yes. this and he's, he's on a cruise ship. And it's like <laughs> of all the ways for like for Storm to go back home. <laughs> yeah. They just it's awkward. use a boat. It was just the funniest. Let's thing party. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also, Darryl, like, but also the way like Storm is like, it's she's not just like hugging people. No. What? Where are her hands when she's talking to Professor X? Like, I, I, and, and her head standing? is like the perspective like, on that place when she's whispering in his ear is like, like you're, okay. Uh, I, I maybe think of the close talker from uh, from Seinfeld a little bit. Like, okay, you, like you can give me. A, I'm psychic. Like you can just think it. And I'm like, you're saying. Like, you don't need to whisper it that close. I'm gonna miss you all. Yeah. <laughs> you are my favorite Everyone. teacher. Everyone. <laughs> It's the bubblies that's uh, talking. About. <laughs> that's, that's the, so yeah. Justin, what are your thoughts here on obviously Rachel being a mutant hunter and, and, and you know, obviously part of killing mutants? 
Yeah, this was like again going back to just what I was mentioning before, like part of the more serious, you know, portion of this book and just seeing again what she's done. And she talks about like, you know, the drug, you know, just being happy that the almost like the drugs that she had been given in that lifetime, yeah, uh, just to numb the pain and and almost be able to forget all the damage that she's done and that she really was a part of a lot of the damage that came from that that you know that place that she was initially. So, um, yeah, pretty dark, pretty dark um, overall. Um, yeah, the suit. Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I guess it's just kind of scary just seeing her her face paint and everything else kind of on her like that. Um, and, and I know that 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 she's had a lot of looks as a character, kind of like Kitty through the years, and that the mm-hmm. you know the stripes on her face and the you know the different costumes. I don't know if you'd seen her in that look before. Uh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. Um, I'm, I'm really only used to her as uh, like the, you know, uh, the, the green jacket kind of. Sure. Like casual wear kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Or, or as she is now in the, you know, in Krakoa as part of the resurrection team. Oh, you know, yeah, that's she's true, part, yeah. She's she's on that squad. Yep. Yep. True. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I agree with Joel. Like the and you, uh, the, the Nightcrawler uh, dressed up the way he is was I wasn't really expecting that. Um, I thought it was uh, he, he's a classy yeah. mutant. I mean, he definitely is. He definitely is very classy and campy. A little bit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Um, I uh, I do like that we get uh, Lockheed in there as well in the group hug. Um, <laughs> Lockheed, you know, confirmed that he's with the group right now. And right. Uh, yeah, I was wondering if she gave him a kiss on the cheek. If that was supposed to be like a kiss, a kiss maybe. On the cheek. Then, but yeah, it it's a weird way to do it. Like she's behind him and like reaching yeah. over and like kissing. Like it just feels so sloppy. From, like leftover from her vampire phase. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> kind of going for the neck a little. That yeah. would be acceptable. No, that's not how you kiss people. Ah, oh, yeah, oh. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Uh, well, then we'll continue on as the uh, the ladies go on a tour of New York. Uh, Amara and Rachel are, are spending an afternoon out together. We get a little memory here with Jaime, the gentleman who found that bizarre necklace not too long ago and has been hiding it uh, in his locker. He has a bit of a golem moment here where he's like, you know, don't touch my precious and then slams it away. But he also hears it talking to him right? And asking him to do things. And he's feeling more and more tempted to follow what it's asking of him as if he's going to potentially trade his soul for whatever this will give him. The, it promises him all kinds of glory, right? And he he's at a place where he wants to get rid of it. He wants to sell it, break it down for parts, but is obviously uh, conflicted on that. Meanwhile, Rachel decides to take Amara to the Metropolitan Museum of Art so that they can cruise through the Roman gallery where it's designed to look like uh, ancient Rome. And obviously the artwork and the, you know, the, the, just the architecture would take her back. And of course it does have that effect, but at the same time makes her a bit homes, uh, you know, homesick. And they're both kind of women out of time here a little bit. Uh, so Justin, the ongoing necklace drama, uh, continues and, uh, and you're getting to know this new character for most fans. This would have been the first exposure to magma if they weren't reading new mutants. So you're getting to kind of know her here. Uh, what are your thoughts on high man magma? Yeah, that definitely got the Lord of the Rings vibes for sure. Uh, like a precious with this, uh, necklace that, uh, Jaime has. Um, and you know, this is Chris, you know, just continuing to sprinkle little seeds along the way with this whole necklace thing, wondering where this is going to kind of turn out. We, I feel like the past couple of issues, we've gotten just that one page of like, you know, five or six panels that kind of continue to talk about or show a little bit more of that, that storyline. Um, and then uh, Amara. Yeah. Like, so this, I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't know much about her. So to me, this was, I actually kind of started to think a little bit of um, Wonder Woman a little bit. Uh, I know, Magic Glass is excited that Wonder Woman uh, <laughs> mentioned here on the show today. Um, but um, yeah, just kind of got some of those vibes even later when we get into like some of the fight scenes and um, like her um, her headpiece and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, this is just a little bit of a time to get to know her a little bit more. Sure. And one thing to comment on, even not only even on this page, but even earlier on was kind of the back and forth between these two. Clearly, uh, yeah, clearly they are, um, you know, getting to know each other and. I like that, um, you know, when Amara asked uh, Rachel, like, you know, how are you okay? What's going on? And and she, like, kind of fakes it. And she's like, no, I'm fine, really. Like, Amara recognizes that. And she's like, oh, why is she hiding something from me? Like, like right. there's a lot of, like, little back and forth between the, the two characters throughout this, which uh, which is intriguing, to you know, especially knowing kind of where it goes uh, after this. Of but, course, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it's good good, good to just kind of get an idea of where, she, where she's come from. 
So obviously, Joel, uh, you got you got your the power of the necklace drawing poor Jaime Rodriguez yeah. in, and then this burgeoning friendship uh, in the art museum here. Uh, a lot of uh, you know art and jewelry and it's, drama. It's really, it shows like thinking about it in Chris's way of writing his narrative style. Like he's very expository, and the fact that it's not just enough for us to see pictures of them going to this place. There's that ex exposition of it. But I like the fact that you get a little more exposition about who Amara is and where she comes from. So if you if you aren't like like Justin was saying, I've never read New Mutants or I don't know this character. Like you're getting the ability to get a little glimpse into who she is, even if it's just for a few panels of her background, which I love. And then totally. poor Jaime, he's one of those those throwaway characters. I I call it the red shirts of X Men. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the guy that was taken over by Nimrod and yeah. uh, like all these characters that like you spend like see throughout some issues and you're getting to know this character like oh who's this new person and it's like you have to have like a counter of like person who appears only to die to <laughs> they gotta up the after. stakes right they gotta show yeah. us the stakes <laughs> <laughs> but so, also I noticed sorry. Rachel's ahead. changed her outfit she yes like we have, to, it's almost like you have to counter to see how many outfits does Rachel wear. <laughs> a lot, just, a lot. <laughs> I, I, in fact, that's why I have this gift here, where she's just like close the doors and then look. Now she's in a different <laughs> outfit again. Like, you don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, this is this this moment right here is going to bring up some of my frustrations with this issue. There are definitely times when I feel like there are panels missing and things are just cut chopped together really sloppily. We go from a museum where we're kind of getting a character scene to. Rachel just psychically gets a vibe. Celine is nearby and I'm up and I'm just running and I'm just going and I'm not talking to Amara and Amara's just got to keep up. And then they chase this Celine in a limousine all the way down to the Hellfire Club around the back door, break in and get in a wardrobe change in like seven panels. Yes. We're from the Met to the Hellfire Club and in disguise in seconds. And it 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 just drove me crazy how like the important stuff is sped up and then other stuff is slowed down. The pacing was just all over the map for me in this. Uh, but yeah, they're now going to disguise themselves in the Hellfire Club, which means slutty dress up time. Here we go, girls. Um, <laughs> Justin, uh, how is the pacing working for you here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you hit it on the dot there. They, they. I mean, it was. It, I was trying to like connect the two. I, I had reread through this like twice, like just within the the page and a half that I was flipping through because yeah. I thought I like was missing a page or something because you of how were. They, they didn't. They didn't the draw page. them. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, then I'm like, because I was like, how? I was like, if the car drove off, did they get in a car? And did they, or did they just walk right. wherever this was? Did it happen to be literally? Apparently, they door? hustled. They just or, ran <laughs> that, really yeah, fast. Like, yeah, like it's I, I was um I was wondering because yeah, literally from one page to the next, it just shows them it shows the car being there and then being down the block, and then instantly they're inside looking over the door and and, and they're and they've already broken in, and then they're telling us in, in these two panels of breaking in, Joel, they're telling us like wow, the security here is amazing. They really have all these layers. This is like the X mansion. This was so difficult, it didn't even show on these panels us doing it. Yep. Yep. Talk about an exposition dump that was so unnecessary. What's up, side quest? What's up, what? E? How you doing? <laughs> but like that was the most that made me laugh. I don't know if you got you, Joel, where it was like, oh, it did. The it, security it, here is amazing. Hey, there's some free costumes. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. It's just <laughs> funny how like just the exposition, but also just like, oh, look at those MacGuffins here that I can use. Oh, look at this. Here's here's the next thing. But yeah, that 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 jump immediately to her knowing, but then also like, wait. You know Celine? You know Celine? Oh. We all know Celine. Stop like, reading my mind. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> and she wasn't a fully reading her mind at the moment, but then she did. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Uh, girl, that's my my thoughts. Do not be sure. I did not yeah. give you permission. It got, all, it got awkward there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, like just that panel where like Rachel's like holding her arm, like, this is important. Like, I know it's important. However, you just read my mind without my brain. <laughs> Violation <laughs> of privacy here. The man. thing that pulled me out in that moment, and it's right, it's the panel right next to you, Joel, is the artwork. Uh, specifically her Amar, Amara's eyes. I don't know what's going on. I, I understand. Yeah. I think they were trying to go for just showing that she's angry, but it, um, it, it just seems really not well done. Um, yeah, it's that, <laughs> rushed. That it feels rushed. Trying yeah. to show a person turning their head, but all you do is put 
all their face on one side of their head. Yeah. yeah. And they just drew like circles as eyes and just left yeah. it at that. Like no, yep. no, you know. When like you like it feels like there should have What's been like one or two more panels of them talking about, hey, don't do that to me. But yes, right. oh my gosh, we have a connection to Celine. What's <laughs> hey. tell me more? <laughs> and instead of we just get this jump to this dark figure in a car driving away, which is a cool, like a cool way of doing that panel. Right. Like, yeah. Showing yeah, the silhouette, yeah, so dark, and you just see them yeah. in the background mm-hmm. in the yellow and yeah. orange color thing. Yeah. yeah, and then we jump right into sexy maid costumes because yeah, that's funny, natural. Like, like, Amara just throws it at at Rachel, and then uses the word slave, which then of course like puts her in a like the wrong headspace again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so let's talk costumes here, Joel, because we get. The new black clean, queen costume from Lady Celine. We get two, not one, two French maids and a partridge in a pear tree here with uh, our guys uh, from the Hellfire Club basically caught up in uh, girl fight drama. Like poor Sebastian Shaw. Uh, he can't get any, but he's definitely caught up in it. He gets all the drama, none of the action. I agree. He definitely <laughs> like, and it's also like, again, it just, it jumps like, the whole first few pages, you think, is this going to be a story about them being in New York, getting to know each other? Instead, it's, oh, we need to get revenge. We need to kill this bee because this one is not. And just her, like, okay, so this is introducing her to being one of the members of the Hellfire Club. So it's setting up something bigger, which, like, we don't realize. If you're reading it back then, you don't know that's what's doing. Right. But now, looking back, you're like, oh, that's how she became a – she uh, – okay, got it, got it. <laughs> uh, Justin, uh, I don't – I can't even, like – it's just, like, scantily clad <laughs> ladies uh, and violence and I guess everything you want from a comic? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I was – I was – yeah, this just went so many different places and I wasn't expecting these two to be the – this. I, you know, to bring in the Hellfire Club and everything else. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I don't know as much about Celine either. So like, this is like new to me in that, in that right. regard. Um, but to, like, I feel like it just happened so quickly and she just shows up and, um, you know, introduced by this other guy. I don't even know who this other guy is. Um, That's Sebastian <laughs> Shaw's. Uh, I think it's his butler, right? I was well, no, like, well, the, the guy in the purple. Purple is not the butler, same guy. It's a different but guy. It's a different it's guy. Probably- Oh, so takes, oh, yeah. yeah. He's the one that finds them and tells yeah. them to go to work. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I was thinking that this guy, I thought he was a, a key character, like, in, <laughs> like as I'm reading. So I'm like, oh, so I'm like, so this guy is bringing Celine, and so they're a t- are they a team? Are they together? Does Celine work for this guy? Does this guy know. work for Celine? And then you don't. This guy works for Celine because and she has all these little these men that she has like around. Well, I was gonna say, then you don't hear from this guy again. So I'm like, okay, he clearly was nobody, like a random yeah. person or whatever. But I, the way I read it, yeah, the way I first read it was like, oh, these two characters are showing up. You know, like that was like the way I was viewing it. Um, yeah. And it was really. And she came weird. already prepared. She was already in an outfit for for this thing. Like, well, so yeah, she was actually. Her, Ryan her. wants to know: oh, was yeah. this was this the same costume that Jean wore? Her. They just passed it along. Yeah. I think Celine has this in a closet somewhere. That seems more likely to me. And like, and when I mean in a closet, I mean she's got houses all over the world, and they all have this outfit in them. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you can't wear it on an airplane. It's not that good. Cool she's outfit. wearing that wherever she wants. Yeah, <laughs> Agro's wearing it right now. That's what he says. <laughs> for you, buddy. Um, this is yeah, is this the first Hellfire Gala? I mean, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe. This is there's the, definitely maybe a ton of fashion. Gala. Yeah, Before fashion, gala. violence, drama. It's got yeah. all the pieces. It's, it certainly it's, does. It's a subcommittee to for the gala. It's like right. Yeah, yeah. Like she doesn't fly interest. commercial. <laughs> so I thought Just, she was coming to like help be a member of the subcommittee, but then right. she's like, actually, I want to be the Black Queen. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm gonna like, try to crush Sebastian Shaw, right? Uh, because that's that'll prove to him I'm powerful, which is an well, interesting thing. I thought, like, we usually see Sebastian Shaw when someone attacks him, he'd be like, brush it off and like spite them. And he's like, internally, like, oh shit, this is 
uh this is this is not good it's not good yeah oh my gosh i was yeah i was i noticed that as like as even as he's like thinking about it after like he's like did she know that this is technically like the way you would kill me uh right you know if you were to go after me like so i i mean i i assume that's gonna play a role down down the road but uh right. yeah this well, is the first like, time they really focused in on his weakness yeah mm-hmm. well like those memes you used if that's bad wow that's bad like it's <laughs> bad for him like he's like yeah. oh yeah. wow she's um this is like a whole like Jean Grey thing all over yeah. again. Like, he was like, I could handle Emma, but I don't know yeah. about this. Yeah. <laughs> well, he thinks he's handling Emma. <laughs> well, yes, that's the theory too. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's continue along to see how this goes. Uh, we've basically got Sebastian deciding like, I need her on my side, but I've got to be careful. She's kind of dangerous. She's got magic and powers. Meanwhile, Rachel's going around serving drinks in this fancy costume. She's going around. She thinks this is hilarious. But she gets – this is where I feel like I'm missing three, four panels. Dude, She's I laughing and giggling. So lost here. So lost. So bad. <laughs> She's laughing and giggling against the wall, and then she instantly is smashing somebody with a, her tray of tea and whatever and blasting this person with her mind as like, it's Celine. I've got her. I read her mind. I'm going to destroy this person, Celine. And I was like, wait, what? Wait, there, I didn't even see that there was a person there. It looked like her own shadow behind her. Right. And then she's hitting somebody. It, 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 this this was super choppy to me, these pages. I don't know, Joel, if you were like, no, oh, this red yeah, fluid. Yeah, it's page. that thing about comics and panels. Like the paneling, like flow is a little off in this. Comic. Yes. It's a little off. And I don't know if that's because when they were writing up the script and there were some, they decided to like lose some panels and some exposition or not but like the narrative not just the the written narrative but the visual narrative is a little off especially with that you like you said i thought at first it was her own shadow i didn't realize it was someone coming up behind her yeah yeah what about you justin i mean i, I have several, where were you I have several things i have several yeah, things here do it first of all i don't understand i reread this like 20 times and i went back and forth between the page this page where she's Rachel's walking out and says, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Not a word. Rachel Summers, no, you know, not one bloody sound to the door closed behind you. And then you go to the next page and it's her. It says, and then, and she's like, oh my goodness. He, he gracious. Uh, and she's like laughing and talking to herself. I don't understand the context. Can you, <laughs> do you know, do you, do you, I don't, what she was she was, laughing at? I Who think was she was laughing at? at the man that she was serving in that room and whatever task that she had yeah. been assigned and how ridiculous it was. And probably uh, her, what her outfit meant to this individual. But ridiculous. Okay, yeah, I didn't get that at all. Yeah. I just saw her like walking out of a room and then trying to keep it in. And then she's like bursting laughing like it was some, you know, it, hilarious punchline or something. It's funny because when I was reading this, it reminded me of another issue of X-Men where um, one of the, uh, the Senator Kelly character, he's going to Hellfire Club with his new new wife who happened to be a maid at Hellfire Club. Uh-oh. And they have a talk about how he's like, oh, are you going to put on your maid costume while you're here? And like, I was thinking of that moment, like, oh, <laughs> Is this a- These maids are doing like cleaning work and subservient work, but like, yeah, like the, this is the other side of it. But like, it feels like there should have been another panel where she's like, maybe explaining a little better what she had gone through. Yeah. But knowing it's Chris and it's an it's it's supposed to be meant for kids, they can't yeah. get too sexual. But there's something abu- sexually ab- wrong or abusive. Well, and I think the emotional beats aren't on point because if she's got all of this baggage from being a slave, why is she laughing at being put in that position again? Like the emotional beats don't work. She's never been in. Like she's not been in a position of being a slave where you were this kind of slave. So to her, it's funny and out of the ordinary. Maybe. It's not usual to her because like we see at the beginning of the book, She's seeing the kind of slave she was right. and what she was doing. And this is not hunting people, not seeing them killed. This is somewhat, some dirty old man wanting to like frolic around in shenanigans with a girl in a... In a You're room. assuming it was a man in that room, but I mean, I guess we could. Or, or group of people <laughs> who knows right. well has been there. Right. So I thought she was just leaving the same very room that Sebastian Shaw was in. That's mm. that's what I took that as. Because there's a lot of cutting so in between I... and a lot of women in lingerie well, and a lot of like, wait, is that yeah. Celine again? Oh, wait, is that her part? Is that his partner? And then there's the. Right. Yeah. 
I just thought she was laughing at what their conversation was in these panels right here. So right. I'm like, what is so funny? I literally reread this again. Funny. And again. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. And Tessa are talking to each other. Like, if I was in the room, it'd be like, Tessa's just like mundanely like, <sighs> she didn't disappear. Right. Yeah. She's just saying to move away. How, like, why do I have to work like, for you? Whatever. Yes. And You're I'm like, an what? idiot. You're the head so of then, the Hellfire Club. So th then this is how far my mind went. So then after this, I'm trying to think, well, as she's laughing and she says, you know, um, it's in bubbles, but she's like, oh, stop, stop, please, no more. It's too funny. I'll die. She, it, I thought she was like, like talking to Amara, like mentally or like trying to tell her this joke or something. And I'm like, so I'm like, well, where's Amara to like, do, to like react to this? So um, yeah. again, my mind, so this threw me off completely. Yeah. Well, you're um, right. It's a continuity error because back on that other page, the butler's telling him to do things and he yeah. wants one of them to go with him. And you're thinking and that, right. they're going to be on the next panels in that room with everyone and they're not. So it's like a continuity, a little continuity error there. I think I agree. Yeah. That yeah. Makes and the other thing that uh, I was trying to figure out was when Rachel does beam or use her yeah. mind to like attack. Yeah. I thought that like a, a cat jumped in the way of the person. <laughs> oh my God. And then and then I was like, wait, maybe it's not it's a cat, so maybe good. it's a rooster. It looked like a, oh, it's a so rooster. bad. Because it's two it. there's two feet. And it's then after so that, good, I go, Justin. maybe it's a toupee. <laughs> I, thought, maybe it's a toupee. <laughs> so I swear to God, I'm like I love just it. staring at this, trying to figure out. How did out. I not notice that? Yeah, because it clearly protects. Uh, so, it is so it. a cat. It, it is so 100% like a cat. Like, yeah, it looks like an animal of some sort. Oh, so, my God. I thought it saved her, Celine. Like, I thought this cat Oh, my jumped. God. It's then so I thought hilarious. this is going to be a character. I'm like, oh, my God. There's a like black cat character that looks like a it's wig. It's just so sloppy. Uh, I'm dying. This is hilarious. <laughs> but I also love yeah. the thoughts that she has because then she says, I can't remember the last time I've had this much. Uh, I've done that. I don't believe. I didn't believe I had it in me anymore. There, there. That's better. Listen to me, will you? Wow. I laughed. I'm really laughing. And then the next panel, she screams, surprise, vampire. And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. There's a vampire? She was just laughing and talking to herself. Yeah. Then I thought of Storm because Storm was leaning in. On it, the press it's Rex. just <laughs> like, it's just so like, I don't know. Like, like they skip two or three years. Like a psychic vampire of sorts, but like, it's oh just God. sort of like the weirdest, like jump scare, like, Ugh. Well, and then they, but then they up but here's even more frustrating for me is the next page. They reverse it. Everything they just set up is now undermined because it was an illusion. We couldn't even understand what we were seeing. So how can you make it an illusion? In the next panel, yeah. Amara apparently was made to appear to be Celine so that Celine could sneak up behind Rachel and then like manipulate her mind back to being a hound. Like, this was so all over the map and it ends with this actually kind of cool panel where you get like the side profile of Rachel and like her through the years and apparently uh, getting a new outfit again. Uh, we're back to, to new fashion statements here, Justin. What, what, what are your thoughts on all this? So, like, the only thing I can take away from these panels are the artwork, I think, is some of my favorite. Obviously, the splash page is beautiful, right. especially the side of the face. Like, love the detail in that and the fact that it fades to white or, or you know, it's white behind it and then fades to black. Um, I really like that. I also like how Celine is, like, standing there with her, you know, holding uh, the back of the neck. Like, she just looks awesome there. Like, yep. really badass. Um but I, uh, what you just said there, I, I don't, I don't think I fully connected that initially until you like kind of explained Amara being supposed to be the, the one she shot or whatever. I don't. Yeah, because really if you look that. at the top panel here by me, you can mm -hmm. see the illusion fading and Amara appearing. I and guess what whatever had right. tricked Rachel right. wasn't strong enough to completely blind Rachel's powers. But by then it was too late because Celine had picked her up by the back of the neck like a cat, and that was all she needed. <laughs> that black cat that jumped in front like, of yeah it's the cat from the last page that's what yeah. I'm I, <laughs> yeah so it, it's definitely um yeah i mean it's all just kind of kind of confusing but um and then she does all this just to give a this is this is her gift right it's like these two girls on on a chain now right to, to sebastian shaw i mean um, yeah more more fishnets more short skirts more lingerie more yeah 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 <laughs> 
So yeah, so ultimately it's just the artwork that really that's really <laughs> it. That, that's good to me. Yeah. I do love that swash page. I mean the, the detail of the face there is really, really awesome. Uh Joel, I, I don't even I mean fashion we're back to fashion again. Uh the red costume is here, the the, the scarf. <laughs> Count. It's five. That's five. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on all this? She has more outfit changes, or just as many outfit changes as Amidala does in the first Phantom. Yeah, the Star Wars. <laughs> and it's all within like five minutes time and within, story. Yeah. yeah, but I love like I agree with Justin. Like these two pages, the artwork that John's done here is really great. The shadowing on that one picture where he's she's behind Rachel and yes, like, with the yellow like, around Rachel's uh, head. And, so, it's yeah. so creepy and. Yeah. The fact that you you're having to turn the page to see this splash page it's like you have them side by side here, but in the book, right. comic book, it's a turn of a page, and then you see this beautiful splash page of all this stuff. I had to like spend a few minutes looking at the image and then reading it and then looking at it again because oh it's yeah, just same, so pretty and yeah, it's that thing where like I have to keep reminding myself the X Men are so pop rock, so everything has to be a little over the top and like. Surprise! <laughs> surprise! But then there's another surprise. No, oh, so no. Very much, but yeah, the Chris and his um, predilection for women in um, scantily clad clothing. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. a thing. Um, but it's just but just when like, Storm just when Storm got into like jeans and a leather jacket, rock. Yeah. everybody else took her took her scantily clad gear and started wearing it. Yeah. But it's interesting because of this this narrative, like this discontinuity, like the fact that like she goes to this room where Shaw is and explains that she wants to be the Black Queen, and she goes, "But I gotta be. I'll be right back. Yeah, be right back." And he's like, "Doolaloo, doolaloo, where are you doolaloo. going? <laughs> like, why? What? Like, you just got here. Like, that part just like threw me off too. Yeah. Like, it's just like, <laughs> like the- Sebastian's just like staring at his watch, like." Uh... She she says, like I, gotta, back, I, gotta, right? I gotta meet with the president here. Yeah, I gotta yeah, I got a schedule. I'm gonna, so yeah. on. <laughs> gotta like gotta like destroy a third world country. I don't just gotta like iron this. his ascots. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my ascots. Like yeah. what if she came back and he was already gone to a meeting? You know? I, like, that'd be awkward. <laughs> I was just, I was just standing there, Tessa going, he left. <laughs> yeah. He'll be that back. He wants. He'll be yeah. back. Just he's leave on, him on the on the he's on Skype. <laughs> yeah. Just put them in that room with all the other maids we have. We gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, we'll we call got you. a whole closet full of outfits. Redhead, so that's a new one. But the, the blonde, we got enough blondes. It's fine. We got a few, yeah. <laughs> Candace was like, wait, there was an illusion? I think my brain gave up and missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone, Candace. You're not oh, alone. so good. I don't think they knew how to portray Rachel yet. That's why all the outfit changes. I mean, that might be fair. Uh, mm-hmm. Callie's wearing that outfit. Okay, so he's got that one going. Oh, Callie's a great one. JP is in the chat. What's going on, JP? He says Claremont definitely has some fetishes about women's clothes. I think in general about people's clothes. I mean, you look at the Inferno, it gets a little more BDSM. There you, stuff. there you go. There you go. Well, let's let's continue on a little bit because now we are in uh, some sort of illusion space designed to make Amara think she's back in her home. And Rachel looks like uh, a monster there to attack her. There's clearly some mind melding going on here. And Rachel has to figure out a way to break through whatever is blocking Amara's mind and bring out magma. Cause she feels like if I get her th- upset enough, it might crack through whatever Celine is doing here. Uh, I did not need another location and another illusion and another b- confusing whatever and give her the valkyrie costume or whatever like this was just at this point joel i'm like do we need another jump to another place and another another and, trick i don't know and we've forgotten that magma is like seth maybe 16 years old and in the new mutants her her roman outfit was not a bustier and a <laughs> well, it was they're a going for the outfit. madonna pointy bra thing oh right? my gosh it's just like wait <laughs> This is definitely Celine imprinting onto them, but still, it's like, so bad. she's like maybe sixteen years old. I mean, come on, like, Chris, no, man, no, or John, one of the two, or the two of them, like, gentlemen. I take no responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> this John, 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 John,
<laughs> John Romita and Chris Claremont. Uh, I don't even know how to pronounce Chode, so I can't do any of this. <laughs> it was just, but it was an interesting, like, the one thing I did like about it was it gave us more background into Amara and where she came from. Mm, right. And the lifestyle she led. Yeah. What, what it was like for her. So that was the interesting part. But, like, the outfits Sorry. were just, you know. No. no for me. No. I love Candace saying, Oh, I forgot this part. Yeah. <laughs> I, and Callie says, Austin Powers is coming to mind. I mean, that's uh, fair. Uh, I mean, Chris is channeling God, Professor X. Yep, yep. Justin, were you like, Damn it, where are we now? Like, are we back in the freaking museum or is this the re- what is happening here? Yeah, this is uh, this is a, a bit of a wild uh, ride. Um, I mean, so again, to what Joel said, like, I agree there we're getting a little bit more of a hint of like what she envisions based on her history. And again, like just not knowing anything about her. I, you know, this is opening doors in that regard, but it's still in this like false world because she's yeah. like, she's like, you know, just imagining it. But um, um, the fight scenes were a little cheesy. I I, I don't know. I, I think it was like the pinks and the, and the yellows just seemed too like basic for me um, on some of that. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um yeah, or at least on that one page. I guess on this yeah. first page, you know, this first uh, page is, is where she's turning into yeah. fire, and her bra is still like, oh yeah, <laughs> whoa, it can withstand magma. It really literally. stands out. Um, so th- this definitely though remind. This is what I mentioned before, where it kind of reminded me more of like a Wonder Wonder Woman, you know, kind of vibe of of yeah. uh, of her past or whatever. But uh, sure. or especially with the well, the ancient know, the, mythology kind of elements. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah so uh, yeah. I just realized. I just I just realized looking at these pages right next to each other is you have that page that's right next to you, John, of her sitting next to a statue. Yeah, and then you have the page on the very far end the very end and she's destroying that same statue and it's like oh look at that dichotomy mm. there of like the panels and that's, that's interesting i hadn't even yeah. uh, seen that because it, it's almost the same for, like size in the framing and everything yeah yeah yep. nice lasso is counting references i appreciate that <laughs> Cal, uh, john says candace has blocked out everything from this issue <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> i love it uh so yeah snaps her out of it she comes back in time to have them all realize no now we all have to fight uh sebastian shaw is like god damn it i didn't even want any of these ladies to come <laughs> yeah, over and they're yeah. all here and celine <laughs> Celine is trying to battle them and control the illusion. She tries the same trick on Rachel. She tried on Sebastian, but by this point, Rachel's already called for help and lo and behold, help shows up Charlie. and we got Nightcrawler bamfing in, taking Celine away. We've got rogue and Colossus and a sort of uh, astral form of Xavier rushing into the scene. Uh, and Magma's like, I want to burn this sucker down. And Xavier's got to be like, no, 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 no. I know this guy. Let's talk to this guy a little bit. And everybody's like, are you kidding me? They, you already got let Celine go with Nightcrawler, who knows where. And now we got to let these other guys go. Uh, Justin, what are your thoughts on how this seems to be wrapping up here? Um, yeah, like I didn't, I was wondering where, how this was going to kind of come to an end. I mean, I, I guess I get now she's basically tried to rile up magma enough to where, you know, her, her, uh, powers essentially get out, so out of control that snap out control. of it. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't expect the team to come in. I, I, they've been doing that. I mean, more recently, I feel like where them as a team show up or they, you know, crash, especially rogue. I feel like now ever since rogue's been on, I feel like, um, I'm just picture her going either through a wall or through a the ceiling or something like that, where she comes in and saves the day. Um, yeah. And, but yeah, that's so the thing. Like I, I watch another, I listen to a podcast and they actually count, they take, they keep count of how many times the X-Men <laughs> break through walls when there's really? a floor <laughs> right there. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. This is on that list of just, Oh look, they it. broke another wall again to come into a room. So oh, it used it like I'm gonna say used to it used to not be like that. I feel like in these the early these seasons that we've you know that we've been reading this this Claremont stuff, I feel like I don't know. I maybe because it's maybe because it's the fact that they're not the core X-Men that the story's around to begin with that they're showing up, but I do feel like this is like the third or fourth time now where yeah, like they come rushing in from somewhere else. So I, I don't know, it's just uh just something different. Yeah. Um but uh, yeah, I, and so this whole thing with Amara, like, so she wants to kill Celine, right? That was her. I mean, like, uh, Celine and the entire house, so, and so and, driven, and the better part of the Hellfire Club. Well, the whole, yeah, 
yeah, for uh, for Professor X to be like, we don't kill, we don't do that. Like, uh, I mean, him having to really break it down for her like that. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Anyways, uh, uh, Joel, are you on Team Magma or Professor X here when it comes to this finale? Are you, uh, you know, I'm on Team Magma more because she's had like. <laughs> She never, ever, they've never had her had a chance to really, like, work through this issue with Celine and what she's done. Because, like, later on, like, spoiler alert, her whole, like, family and where she's from, it gets, like, horribly, like, retconned and then re-retconned. And it's, like, she's, like, she's had it almost as bad as Rachel with her family (laughs) and her life. Because it's bad. But, yeah, like, it's just, yeah, I, I, I feel for 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 magna because this woman killed her mom got her killed her mom almost got her dad killed controlling like this small little village town thing that they're they're from but yeah i i I feel for her (laughs) like the grief that she has and the way she's expressing her grief it's hard not to want to do that you have sure person you focus your grief on to to right well and clearly for rachel as well right Uh, yeah yeah but it's interesting because (laughs) I didn't realize that was ex- Professor X at first that's standing <laughs> next to Magma. When I was, he hasn't really done this stupid astral body thing much I've at never this point. Seen it's that all before. very much. It's so it's all like, very foreign. What the heck is yeah. this weird? And he's doing like jazz hands. He's like yeah, he's doing this whole jazz hands kick jump thing. And <laughs> yeah, You're like when when did Vision change? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. I had no idea what was going on with that. It was hilarious. Yeah. Again, yeah. like. I think Candace says that you know they, they're they're surprise attacks. They are good for their surprise attacks, and they are good for just breaking down walls. Like, yep, we need to get in that place. Hurry, someone break through the wall. Yeah. There's a We're door. We're here for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get away. Forget, forget the door. Let's just go this way. Overrated. It's cooler. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, then we get into the end of the story here. Uh, everybody's like trying to pick up all the glass off the floor. <laughs> sorry about that. I was sorry for <laughs> ruining these maid costumes. And, uh, you know, Rachel's very upset. And then she, did my favorite line, she says, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try one of my mom's favorite stunts. And she basically faints. Uh, <laughs> which for me is a Jean Grey move top but to I, bottom. She has a, that, it's a six uh, clothes change. She did. She changed she, her clothes for a six. That's what she did. She used her powers to do what her mom does, or which is change her clothes. And it's so overwhelming. Clothes, she faints, which clothes. is a Jean Grey move. Right? Yeah. But she I does just, it with everyone's clothes. Like, everyone's I clothes it. changed. I, I freaking love it. Hilarious. <laughs> uh, all of it basically being like, let's get these kids back to the mansion, and we'll let Sebastian Shaw spend his own money cleaning this place up. Oh um, it all ends with back with Jaime Rodriguez down on the subway. He's waiting for the train. He can't figure out why the train's not coming. He's got the jewels on him. The necklace is there. And while he's standing there, he gets stabbed by this other person who comes up behind him. They pick up the necklace and it seems like trouble's coming. Uh, Something is going on. The necklace has a new host potentially. And we are left with this cliffhanger with the necklace again. Um, Yeah. JP says, I've come to this late and I'm completely lost, but it seems like I wouldn't understand it if I watched it from the beginning. (laughs) I've been Uh, lost the whole time. It's just yeah. it's just one of those. If we've been um, lost, all of us have been lost. <laughs> <laughs> so, Justin, what are your thoughts on how this kind of all, I'll put it in air quotes, wraps up? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was laughing before because when you said you were getting ready to talk about these panels here and you said like your favorite line of the of the issue. And yes. I was nodding thinking you were going to say the line I was thinking of. Okay. And you were, you were talking about the one you're talking about, uh, which is good too. Um, I like where um, Amari is like, how did you all know that we we're in trouble and where to find us? And uh, Rachel's like, you must have heard the telepathic mayday, right, Professor? And, and they look out and they're like, oh, <laughs> and there's like destruction everywhere. Yeah. Like, oh, that, that's like awesome. no, not exactly, Rachel. <laughs> And then you look outside and it's all, which yeah, would have yeah. been a funny gag if that had been a bigger panel at the bottom of like the destruction, but it's this tiny little thing in the freaking corner. Yeah. You barely um, get it. Or yeah. bad pacing. They can't yeah. even set up their joke and punch it out. You know? Opportunity missed. Um, the other thing I want to highlight on the ending here. So yeah. So the whole Jaime thing, like, you know, whatever this thing is in the ne- necklace, is, it seems like it's been released. There's fire everywhere. And so I'm sure we'll get to that at some point. But the thing that stood out to me uh, was just seeing the Dazzler poster, 
for her new, you know, movie or which you know mentions uh, Dazzler the movie, um, and it's saying like Mutie die on it, you know. And I just like that they, yeah. put, you know, the, in the end. subway at the very top here. Mm. <laughs> that that one, it's hard. It's definitely hard yep. to see, but yeah. Also, is that a Zoom? Did they have Zooms back then? <laughs> just not a Zoom. The I, walk- I, 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 call, I can't use the word Walkman, so it says Watchman. <laughs> the Watchman. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I love the Watchmen he has. It's so uh, it's so 80s. Uh, Claremont be like, crap, better put the X ex- Men's in the book so fans don't complain. <laughs> uh, all right, Joel. It's like a it's like a it's like they were doing a they were doing a product placement with a character for yeah. another comic book because like I still don't have that comic book. I have all the Dazzler mini the series, or comic book run, but I don't have that one yet. That's still oh, like misreflection. <laughs> but yeah, like it's just a weird. Like I thought it was really funny. Like awkward alert. Oh yeah, Rachel, you 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 didn't have the strength to contact us psychically. So it's what you did to magma that yeah. made the like <laughs> like one of those yeah. like you know those memes that says. Awkward alert. Yeah. We actually got to get out of here because I think the Fantastic Four are on the way too. So, yeah. <laughs> like, it's funny. Oh, we're going to leave Shaw to clean up this mess and they go outside and go, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, um, we got to red tag that house. So we got to get the dam- We got to call damage control for that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like it, her changing their, their costumes, like, I'm going to do what mom did. And this is not just doing <laughs> one outfit, everyone's outfit. I was like, okay. So oh, it's like, like you said, like a kid. Oh, that was, that was nice of you, Rachel. Like, yeah. Let's get you home now. Yeah. Let's get you home. But like, then you have this whole, like, going back to that, that subplot of Jaime and just like, his death this crazy necklace. Is this powerful thing. It it sort of reminds me of the whole subplot of Nimrod with the, the construction worker. Again, a construction worker, <laughs> a person who has no powers, finds this little thing that looks like some doodad, and then all of a sudden they're Nimrod. And in this case, they're now dead. Yeah. And this other character who's a horrible person is easily manipulated by the 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 yeah, thing. we've we've had Jaime for like three issues, and it was like, yeah, I yeah. killed that guy. That's what happened with the, the construction worker. Oh, we get a little like more. Four or yeah. five issues. Yeah, he's in the background doing this stuff, and then eventually dies when Nimrod takes him over. <laughs> yep. Don't spoil thought, it for Justin. He's oh, I thought we get a. I thought we get like a, a limited series of Jaime. You know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it's the next. It's it's the next, yeah, it's Nightcrawler. It's in the next Jaime. Omnibus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. One other thing too, just like the o- overall of this. Yeah, issue. I was gonna say you should launch us into giving scores final thoughts all that oh kind of well okay yeah so just like i just laugh at the idea that sebastian shaw really had nothing to do with anything <laughs> right? this <laughs> entire time and like so this all got brought to his house like yeah. all the his yeah. floor you know like yeah. uh his doorstep and and like i wonder I mean, I'll see if it writes into the next story or whatever, but like, you know, what, what, where does Sebastian Shaw pick up from this? Uh, his whole thing, I hope he had insurance. I assume he had insurance, but like, yeah, everything is destroyed. He wasn't even up to any evil plan. Like, he just no. had some chick show up and cause all this ruckus and, and, it, yeah. it almost you, builds it up like you almost think like oh yep sebastian shaw up to his evil you know evil ideas but it's so like good. he was really just a good guy here just an innocent guy yeah Ooh. this woman shows up i want to join your pe- team i'm already wearing the lingerie i yeah. bought slaves i'll be right back and he's like wait what what's going on here are the slaves they're going to destroy your whole house <laughs> yeah. and bring the x-men down here i didn't even ask for any of this right he like what's he's just like waking up for? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> he's like, uh, like Tessa called the insurance. She's like, I already got him on the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already yeah. called them. Like, this is downstairs. Yeah. Things. So if anything, Hellfire, it, you know, what do you want? They're the losers. <laughs> of this, Tessa of this from Hellfire Club. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. He'll be here. How? Okay. Great. We'll send, <laughs> send them quickly. So yeah. good. I'll send the paperwork right now. In fact. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, as far as grades go, um, <laughs> hit it hard, buddy. Hit it hard. Gosh. Rip the bandit off. <laughs> I'll go first. I, I, so I, this first. Like... Okay. I gave it a four. This is a four. This, oh yeah. This book, I, I was book. a little lower than that. <laughs> oh, go, go. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was, I was ball. I was aiming around three and a half, uh, when I, as I was Do thinking it. about this, but, um, yeah, like the one thing that I think I, well, you know, the one cool splash page really great like i appreciate that and then and then the details of 
Uh, and again, I don't know how much like where the whole story with Rachel goes. So um, if if this Rachel is, we're gonna get continued more of this, or if like eventually the real the other Rachel is born, and 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 you know, I don't know where that all goes. But sure. um, for what I know now, um, I appreciate that we get more detail behind her her backstory of the future world that she came from. Right. So again, I'm not if we get more of that down the road, great uh, or or not, whatever. But I like that this issue did take time to give that, and that it was as dark as it kind of showed it. So that those were some of the takeaways. I think if anyone were to ever like kind of bring this up, but otherwise, um, it the the whole thing, her laughing. And I like there were so many moments where I just didn't get it. And I just felt yeah. like I felt like Kanye West in in uh, in South Park, like the South Park episode in Kanye where <laughs> they say a joke and he just doesn't get the joke. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but like I, it's just that's how I felt. My <laughs> like, question, though, for you, it. Justin, was there a part of you rolling in here tonight going, God, I really hope John doesn't like this issue? <laughs> Um, yeah, like were I was all I, worried that like Joel and I'd be like, this is the best issue of X Men. <laughs> we nah, love this, get... this introduction to characters that we care about, and it's a beautifully you know, rendered. It didn't, it didn't really cross my mind, but I, you know, you know me, like I, I would always try to prepare in a way where I'm like going to try to think of the positives more than the negatives. I, I and even not, now, I'm trying to. But, I, I was yeah, on the phone with Magic tough. Lasso last night. It I was, was so tough. angry. I just I had read Traveling to Mars. Uh, I'm already calling it the book of 2024. It's a phenomenal, a phenomenal book. Yeah. Uh, Mark Russell did a great job. And then I immediately read this comic immediately <laughs> after. And it was just like, I, I hate, I hate, I love and hate <laughs> comics. It was like right there. It was this incredible roller coaster of emotion for me. It's got to be part of your uh, worst read in 2024. You can <laughs> highlight this book at that point if you want. That's and so then name true. a couple of the reasons. And yes, Callie, do you oh. like fish sticks? That's, that's it. That's I mean, joke. fish sticks are good. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, Joel. What, what 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 would you grade this? How What's where are your scale, thoughts? Is it on scale this? one to ten or one to five? What's we scale? use like a CGC scale, basically. Oh, you get a yeah. you get a point five, like a you get a nine eight. Really you know, if you really want to get up there, but I'd say it's a four point five for me on a scale of one to ten. All right. Okay. Yeah, because it's again, it's a, it's a. It, I I read it last night too, and I I think I read it like two hours before I went to bed. I I finished reading it. I would just sat there on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> doing in it yeah. like what <laughs> I read that again no i don't know if i want to read that again I, I love it. like i before i read it i was excited like oh i might read this twice and like i was like no that that's a good that's it's a, good that's, that's good, good. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's good it's very formulaic of chris like i've been telling you like foreshadow like spoiling it a little like yeah this happens with another character where like there's this sub character right. that's going through these issues and then you have these character development issue that's sort of like very mundane but also yeah. like why did this happen now and where <laughs> okay but then i also thought about it like as we were talking like chris claremont had almost like a bible of where he was going to be going for the next five to ten years so everything had a reason and a purpose mm, yeah. we just don't know it yet and then if you think about like where it's in the krakoa era and how Shaw acts with all the characters, and it's very yep. much like, oh, like they really like remembered who Shaw was and what he was like for and sure. His interactions with Kitty and everyone else, yeah, all the Marauder stuff, and yeah, yeah, it was just like, oh, I see it in this book too. Like they really got his essence of who he was then and now, and it's very the same. Like they didn't like no ret like too much retconning, but like really mm. great. So totally, yeah. There's lots of other issues coming up that are gonna. Answer your questions, Justin, about what's going on with Rachel. I don't know that they'll answer Great. all of them, but they don't all of them. <laughs> like why she was like, laughing when she came out of the. Yeah, not like, <laughs> no, we're not going to get into that. Her becoming having a better identity and more of a character within the. Within yes, the cool yeah, for sure. Cool. cool. Uh, nice. I like Magic Lasso bringing up Angus McSquirter. Uh, oh, he did not. Angus. He did not make it into this one. Uh, That's right. Uh, That's right. Callie says I was going to go for a three, but these outfits four. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, okay, Chet. Chet with the lowest grade yet, but, flat three. Wow, yeah, um, that's that's the lowest. Yeah, Bobby says it's a nine eight with white panty uh, pages. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, this is a book that stays raw, bag boarded without hope of a CGC. <laughs> <laughs> so good. That is uh, stapled after that. <laughs> Eric says, "Can you consider uh, this a segue plot developing issue?" Uh, I, I was so all over. Uh, yeah, I would say it is a, definitely a segue plot developing issue, but like I said, it could have been an annual. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, JP says, did they answer all the questions about Rachel? I feel like they, half of them are still floating out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, okay, yeah. last one here. Uh, how many tens of dollars will the nine eight go for? <laughs> here you go. I'm here for you. I'm here for you, John. I'm here for you. Uh, really? The know? answer is one hundred. Why? For Why would you spend that much money on that? <laughs> there are a hundred and eighty <laughs> of them. God. There are 113 96s, 58 9 4s. I want to find out who thought this was a good idea. <laughs> Give it that rating and that many. That's them. $100. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. Uh, oh, yep. so great. So there's, there's, there's a great reaction. Yeah. <laughs> I did include Magma's first appearance in New Mutants issue eight from October of 83. So if you okay. are looking for her early appearances, uh, and can't wait until Omni New Mutants next fall. Uh, there it is for you. You can go and find that. Uh, John, I like how you shortened her name to just her first and last. You left her two middle names out. <laughs> I, yes, I'm not doing <laughs> Juanita, Gregorita, Aguila, Fernanda. It's like the character that Julie Louis Dreyfus is playing in the MCU. Oh, yes. Cortesa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Contessa, the Contessa, yeah. Allegra Fontaine. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that's it. I don't. I don't want to look at this cover anymore. So I'm going to stop sharing. Uh, <laughs> look at it. Uh, look at it. Uh, I don't know that there's anything to say. Uh, you could buy a lot of things for a hundred dollars, Candice. I agree. I agree. Yeah. You can buy a lot of things. Here's what I got to say though, uh, Joel. Uh, we're not done, but I, I just want to thank you for suffering through this with us. Like I said at the top <laughs> of the show, this is one of those. When you when people feel strongly about a book, it's a lot of entertainment to, to, to discuss. So I appreciate you sure. being willing to uh, to climb into this story with us. <laughs> I don't mind. I, I love talking about X Men and Rachel because they're she's one of my favorites. So anytime I get to talk about X Men or Rachel, it's, it's, a, it's a great time. I enjoy it. But yeah, you. it was definitely one of those things where you like you finish it and you just sort of sit there and like. <laughs> Did that really happen? Did that was that? <laughs> yeah. I, am I alive? It felt like a bad X Force. This real life. Yeah. Am I in a simulation? Right. The uh, danger room. You're in the danger room, Joel. <laughs> Lasso says, "Did you pick this issue, Joel? Are you being punished for something?" <laughs> I'm hazing. I'm hazing myself. That's what I said. I haze myself for this. Yeah. Because I, when I was looking at the issues, like, oh, it's got Rachel, and I gotta read that. That'll be right. Like, so yeah, that. Was, and little yeah. did he know, he he had a year to really think about it afterwards. If, I, if yeah. I'd gone to uncannyxmen.net and read the summary, I would have been, I would have been better <laughs> off. Yeah. Going to uncannyxmen.net, uh, reading the summary of the fair, and it's just fine. I'm like, I'm like, the truth is, Ryan, we actually had to pay Joel to come on. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we still, we're, and we're gonna continue to pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, installments. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could buy quite a few mid grades for a hundred dollars. <laughs> so good. It was a dollar. There it is, dollar, dollar bin count. all day, baby. I got it at a. I got it at a <laughs> Justin's gonna have whiskey on his nose here in a second. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, oh my gosh. So, folks, we are at the trivia portion of the show. Uh, Justin and I each have two questions. We're gonna ask about last show that we did over on Justin's channel a few weeks back issues five and six of the Kitty Pride and Wolverine mini series. And we're looking for two correct answers and one entertaining answer. And Joel's going to pick that one for you and <clears throat> give you the credit for them on the list. The, the list is basically all the answers from the whole season. And that what's, that's what goes on our raffle crazy spin wheel at the end of the season when we give away all kinds of goodies. So stick around. You can be correct. Sure. You can copy and paste whatever Chet says and try to be spell checking it. So you get to be correct. <laughs> or you can just try to be funny, entertaining, have a laugh and throw a comment in the chat. Uh, there have been many occasions where a person with one single raffle entry wins an awesome big prize. So it, it could be you even with just one entry, like my man, Stu, Dr. Doom. He, I'm staring at his right now. He's got one raffle entry. Uh, Daryl, read your comics. One raffle entry. They're hoping to roll some Yahtzee on this. Uh, so, uh, Justin, do you want to kick us off with our first question here tonight, my man? Sure. And by the way, JP's like, wait, our episode was the last one? It seems like months ago. It's been a long <laughs> couple of weeks. Yeah, that's true. Uh, we'll do a few uh, weeks off. Yeah. My first question is, how did Kitty sneak up on Shigematsu and attack him in the beginning of issue 
five. Mm. So again, these are from the Kitty Pride and Wolverine limited series that we broke down. And this yep. is for issue five question. How did Kitty sneak up on Shigematsu and attack him in issue number five? Quite a mm. quite a clever way. Yes. A so lot of it's going to be focused around those battles with the various villains and heroes in those stories, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, um, so entertainment wise ryan says she did the macarena that's how she I did snuck not up need on. that earworm in my brain thank you. <laughs> she wore a clever disguise mm, yes <laughs> uh i see two correct answers i don't know which two you'll pick though uh, yeah gonna... so i was gonna say i i ended up leaving my answer the way i sent it to you john um, I yes. was initially going to add the word floor, but I didn't. I just left it at desk. So okay. I'm going to leave it at uh, just A's through a desk. JP and uh, and Chet looks like the wow. other Wow. We one. are actually choosing somebody, uh, and it's going to be Chet. <laughs> uh, spell, yeah, spelled uh, phased right. So there you go. Uh, Sorry, Eric. Uh, Sorry, Eric. Uh, my bad. Yeah. Uh, like you're not wrong, Eric, but I was looking for desk. It's the desk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, she was wearing her invisibility cloak. That's what she did. She busted out her Harry Potter accoutrement. There you go. Yep. All right. So That's we got two spells. correct answers. Uh, Joel, any of those uh, wowing you so far? Well, there's only been two. So, oh. you know. Oh. She knocked on the door and said, housekeeping you on for pillow? <laughs> <laughs> I think mm-hmm. uh, based on what's there, mm-hmm. I can see. I'm going to go with uh, she did the Macarena. I could think of like five other things I would have said, but since I'm not allowed to be in the chat and play, <laughs> yes, I can't choose my own answers. You're on lockdown tonight. Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I made a joke. Uh, my question last time, I made a joke about uh, Carmen, Kitty's dad, and Logan, and I said they th- their appearance had something kind of cool in common there. Uh, what is it? that their appearance had in common. So you got to think back to the way Carmen looks, the way they draw them and the way Logan looks. Uh, and I, we may end up just giving us several comedy answers to this one. I was the only, I just still find this amusing. So I'm going to use it as my answer. Uh, something about Logan and Carmen Kitty's father. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. So what, what is it I said about their appearance that they kind of uh, had in common? Was that really a joke? I mean, I try. Uh, I don't even remember this. <laughs> I was on the show. <laughs> I don't know what the chin strap means, uh, but it sounds entertaining. Oh, it's like where you have the hair that goes all the way around like this. Ah, chin strap. Uh, I, I, you know, what? maybe I'll just give it to the to to Chet Eye. Well, we'll see where we go here. He's not far off. He's not, He's not far, far off. off. Uh, they have the best haircuts. I mean, nobody's ever said that about Wolverine. Nobody's <laughs> ever. He's he's got the worst hat hair. He. Uh, I'm gonna throw it to Eric and uh, Chet Eye. Basically, I felt like their facial hair combines to make one beard. <laughs> <laughs> what Logan's got and what what the what Carmen's rocking, it makes one beard combined together. So. I got you. Where's side quest? I know you're on here. There you are. Sixth one for you, side quest. And Chet Eye's getting another one. He is he is on fire as always. Uh, they both wear bedhead. I mean, that's not wrong. <laughs> they were both definitely Canadians. <laughs> Shot fire. Uh, they have the best haircuts. Just straight up. A lot, a lot of comments on their their hair. I mean, Wolverine gets a lot of those anyway. Uh, all right. Any of those wowing you, Joel? I think they were definitely Canadians. That's <laughs> Cali. John with his seventh. He's got seven raffle Ooh. entries now, man. Keep nice. it strong. Nice. Justin, back to you. All right. Um, I'm going to rephrase my question here for this one. <laughs> they both ate some. <laughs> oh, I want to change my answer. I want to change my answer. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll throw another. Jo- I'll, I'll give you another one, Ryan. That is amazing. <laughs> they both ate sunfire. Oh, my God. Nailed it. Yeah, and so you know what? Good. Sunfire hates them, too. Oh, my God. I'm dying. 
I'm dying. That is that is Ryan. That's that's the oh, best thing I'm going to so see today. Good. I'm just telling you right now. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Justin. Uh, back to you, man. Your second question. Uh, where, <laughs> where did uh, my second question is? Where did Logan bring everyone to eat at the end of the series? Mm. Gotta there be, go. gotta be specific. Just so you know. Yep. Yep. Where did Logan bring everyone to? I'm, eat? I'm looking at how you spelled it here too, and I'm ready. Uh, yes. Yeah. At the end of the series, people are gonna have to <laughs> take out the. <laughs> Uh, I, I, mean, I don't think it's likely, but I also know that it's Logan. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, Logan. <laughs> it's where a kid can be a kid. Uh, uh, Chuck E. Cheese. E. Cheese. There you go. There you go. Wow, the comedy answers are here now. Oh my yep. god! This this is the one. <laughs> the locker on the Blackbird where he stores his yeah. <laughs> nice. JP. You may just have to always managing to get the sandwich answer in there somehow. <laughs> they're, they're, well, they're you know they're in Hong Kong, so they're going to the Panda Express. <laughs> the strip club. Take take that teenager to the strip club. Yeah, take yeah, they're two remember two children that, uh, yeah. that they brought yeah. with them. Yep. Yeah. The adopted daughters. <laughs> yes. <both kids. laughs> Uh, so far, no correct answers, but I think this is, has the best comedic answers. Seriously, uh, everyone like actually like came out of the woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we just give a couple guys, of comedic on, answers. Say, say something not silly. Now it's like right. We we turned it on and now we lost it. Right, <laughs> everybody's out there. Candace was ready to say Panda Express too. She was like there. She was ready. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it, JP. <laughs> He beat you to the strip club, as he often does. Uh, I will say, I see one correct answer. That's I see it as one well. Yep. Correct answer. Oh, is a correct <laughs> answer in all that? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> in all that mess, it's there. I swear, wow. Just it is there. Copy pasting. Copy pasting. Copy and paste. It's spelled correctly too, which is a shock. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> JP figured it out. He spelled it right. It's not Cali. It's not Hooters. It's not Hooters. <laughs> He's got uh, it. Right. That's All an right. even better punchline to the funny answers. As yeah. Well as second. Uh, Arby's, they got that meat. <laughs> All right, Joel, I'm going to let you pick two comedy answers because they're just so dang good. Oh, so you, no. can, you can divide it up if you like. Okay. Oh, wait, who uh, got the second one? Oh, JP got the JP the copied one. and pasted fast. Chat. Okay, chat and sorry. JP. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Not the Waffle Hut. <laughs> no, which one was the correct answer? I didn't. I didn't know. It was Shapiro's. Yeah. Yeah. Shapiro. It was Shapiro's. I thought that was another comedy one. I was like, I don't know what that is. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shapiro's the ice cream shop. Oh, ice cream shop. Ice cream shop. Oh, okay. Um, take it I think. Uh, can you scroll up for me? Oh, yes, wait. I can. I got it. Uh, I got it started it. all. It, this is where it all started. This is where the magic started. <laughs> um, I think the two that I'm going to pick are Bobby's All You Can Eat Chicken and Waffle Hut. There you <laughs> go. And uh, Arby's They Got the Meat. Oh, Bobby twice. <laughs> Bobby gets doubled down. Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Oh, two more. Another one came in. Wait. Oh, no, that's also Bobby. Yeah. Bobby's killing it. So, oh, yeah. Bobby, you doubled up, buddy. You get you got double. You double dipped, my man. Nicely right. done. Nice Last done. question of the night. Um, uh, instead of killing Ogun, Wolverine goes berserk and defeats him. And but what does Logan do to him? So I will accept one of two answers. So well, whichever one you give me, uh, I, I sent both answers over. But what does Wolverine do instead of killing him? Mm, when in doubt, copy and paste what chat threw out, chat threw out and then spell correct it. And then post yeah, it. Yeah, definitely everybody. run it through a spell check, correct? Uh, dresses him up like Diana Ross. There you go. <laughs> Ryan is consistent. Uh, I'm, that Sunfire joke is going to stick with me. It's, gonna <laughs> stick. It's, it's, it's there for life. It's so good. Mm -hmm. What does he do? He doesn't kill him. Logan doesn't kill him right there. You know, what does Logan do? Hmm. He got he gutted him. He lets him live if he gets a matching haircut. <laughs> Gave him a claw hug. Oh <laughs> yes. Oh he just wants a hug, man. Mm. 
So, I'll, yeah, I will give it to E and JP. He he basically uses his claws and takes his mask off and then gives the sword to Kitty and says, kill him. That was the other thing I would have accepted yep. uh, is oh, that he allows Kitty. So I'm going to give uh, side quest and JP get the point. But let's see some of these comedy answers because they're pretty dang good. We got uh, gave him a group on to Hooper Hooters. There you go. <laughs> dishonor him dishonor on you dishonor on your cow <laughs> there's some giggling going on all right a wedgie gave him a wedgie there you go mm. challenges him to a dance off there it is they're break dance fighting he's so hot right now <laughs> all right joel do you have one that you like there so many choices now on this one. I think um, <laughs> too many choices. But I love Cali Comics. Gave him a Groupon for. <laughs> I mean, it's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, as I say, sticking with the theme. Sticking with the theme. <laughs> Can't go wrong. Well, chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. He, oh, don't break his karaoke machine. No, that, How that, dare that, you? Yes. <laughs> Uh, if you guys don't know Joel, you, you got to get on the Instagram. You got to get on the YouTube. The links are down below. Make sure you're following my friend here uh, and make sure you're following Justin because we're on his channel in two weeks, not That's next right. week, the week after to yeah. do issue 190 to continue on the series. And then from there to basically the giveaway show, it's going to be we're going to we're not going to really take any breaks. We're going to power through uh, end of April, May and into June. Yeah. Uh, Joel. Thanks, man. This is this is, this yeah, is Joel, amazing. thanks for joining us, man. You you've reinvigorated my love for these books, even if I had to talk, but just getting to talk about them. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Great uh, in this general direction, Bobby coming in with another one. Yeah. Yes. I parked in your general direction. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, well, that's it for us. Hour and a half. I know we went 90 minutes on this on the issue. <laughs> <laughs> worth hashtag worth it uh but thank you gang for coming out and we will catch you all again later yep bye, bye. later